Ready, break. Welcome. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> to Coffee Talk episode five. Six. Six. Okay. Five. I don't know. It's labeled five. five. It is five. Um, I just like to mess with Our you. guests today are Abigail Noel. No. No. Mm-hmm. PR and communications manager and Morgan Key, business development manager for Destination Brian. Abigail shares the stories of Brian and its businesses and attractions to the media through press releases, interviews, and website social media content. Morgan has a background in the hospitality industry and a drive to help showcase the local Brian community. She connects hotels to a wide array of groups to host their meetings and events in the Brian community, as well as developing unique experience packages and offerings to create memorable experiences. Welcome. Welcome. So I pulled that off the website. Yeah. I was like, you read our descriptions perfectly. Yes. Yes. Now let's get into the real stuff. Yeah. Okay. What do you actually do? Right. I'll let you kick it off, Abigail. Yeah. So with PR and comms, basically I um, tell the world what Destination Brian and Brian, Texas is all about. Um, so mainly a lot of that is through um, e-newsletters, press releases. I talk to the media all the time. And then I also host travel writers that come into Brian. Um, so again, working with publications, those, those travel writers work for like not just regional, but state and national publications like Texas Monthly, Travel and Leisure, um, National Geographic and all those. So I host them here um, and show them all the things about Brian. So they write articles about us. So yeah, a lot with the media is yeah. that in a nutshell is what I do. <laughs> we should um, part that with their in- Yeah. Huh. What? Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> yes. 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 That, you should that. partner with them. Yes. yes. But I was thinking like the marketing internship. Oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Cause yeah. we have a marketing intern and she's very mm-hmm. interested in a lot of things. Yeah. And unfortunately a lot of the beginning is very social media heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. That was a good idea. I'm yeah. Sorry. In the microphone. Yeah. You should get on that. I'll just add it to your list. Of mm-hmm. Yeah. No, <laughs> Jamie's, list Jamie's the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's a Jamie's never ending list then. Yes. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that's exciting. Yes. So, um, as the de- business development manager, you know, Traditionally, it's, you know, I'm, I'm our sales department. That's what that's what I am. I wear all the hats. But um, my background is in convention sales. And so whenever I moved over to Destination Brian, I'm now doing conventions and sports sales. So yay sports, getting to learn all the things. Um, but something um, that I want to really point out is how DMOs and and business development and how we're shifting the way things have always been done. So historically it was, you know, here's a lead. We send it over to our hoteliers. Can we source it? Can we place it? Um, What we're looking to really pioneer as Destination Brian is doing more of conference development. So creating and owning our own events, you know, with with Texas a and being here in Bryan College Station, we have so much talent. We have so many influential people. We have you know, a number one institution. How do we curate these uh, these conferences and these events where everyone else is traveling to? Why are we not hosting those here? Mm-hmm. So putting the right people and brains together to really curate and own our own homegrown conferences. And so that's how my position is shifting in, in that mm-hmm. sense. Um, but still, of course, helping place and source some of those leads, but more so um, enhancing our hotel sale, sales staff. How can I be an extension of them? What type of resources can I provide them? So that way they're not only growing and evolving in their position, um, but we're all still, you know, working smarter, not harder. I can see why you're in sales. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can see why you two hit it off. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm just saying. You can talk to a wall. Yeah. That's why I send that's you. That's why sales are good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't do the sales. There's yeah. a lot of times where I, like, will start talking. like, can you tell I work in sales? <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are looking at doing some in-house events, conferences, mm-hmm. what kind mm-hmm. of conferences are you looking to do? Yeah. So still in the very early stages. But like I said, you know, really, how are we going to utilize low hanging fruit, if you will, the university, you know, we, Texas A&M is a university that not only is, um, really impactful in the state of Texas, but nationwide international. So why not showcase what we're doing well here and let other smaller universities come in and learn from what we're doing and bring like-minded people together. So kind of like a 
college hometown, you know, SEC schools, whatever that is, it's still in the very beginning stages, but that's mm-hmm. something that we're looking to curate. I always emphasize and lean back into South by, you know, it's this event that started as something so small and has grown over the years. And it's, they have different tracks, they have different independent events going on. And so I really look up to that, that um, festival as an inspiration into what we can create as, you know, something here in Bryan College Station with that inspiration. Got it. It's all about how you interpret it. Yeah. <laughs> now it just clicked what you were talking about, IAVM. Yeah. That's how slow I am today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's been fun. I know. You're pretty. I'm tired. <laughs> Where's another cup of coffee? Yeah, yeah. Really, I've only had one. No, we, um. so the, um. I'm going to get it wrong. I always get it wrong because they change it. The International Assembly of Venue Management mm-hmm. Managers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is it now? It used to be management, now managers. I don't even remember. So I'm not a part of that, but I know some of my former colleagues who have now moved over to um, the athletics uh, part of A&M. They're looking to get involved with that. And so looking, so maybe I can help make that connection with y'all. So we have in 2024, is there in their biannual call or the, what is the name of that dang thing? You can talk. It's fine. So region six. By there you go. Yeah. Conference. So we're trying to pitch it to be hosted here and awesome. we, let me help. Yeah. So yeah. I was just thinking about that. So that's what TJ was referring yeah, to. However, I can clearly help. my brain is not functioning yeah, today. TJ, I was, I was on the way okay. Today. See, yeah. Huh? Jamie got me. Well, I know, but yes, that's why I like these podcasts because my brain gets moving yeah. eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, what we're kind of getting at is, you know, I want us to be number one. I want people to think of, Texas A&M, Bryan and College Station, top of mind Mm -hmm. for a premier location to host their event or bring their group, Um, whether it's a stopping point or starting point, an anchor point, whatever it is. I mean, we've got some really good stuff here. We've got great people. Why are we not showing it off? Why are we not hosting everything here? Let's be number one because we are number one and showcase that. I'm confident. (laughs) y'all have a lot of great venues i mean obviously we have great hotels but there's also great venues not associated Mm -hmm. with hotels i mean i know there's what is legends legends event center Center. yeah Yeah. and they're already planning Mm -hmm. all Um, hosting all sorts of events there yeah um yeah. I had an email out to their GM and apparently something happened and they were going to come on. And Yeah. So we actually do have a GM. Well, I say we, in my mind, we're all partners. Um, there mm-hmm. is a GM in place that should be onboarded by the end of this month. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have been actively selling that facility mm-hmm. for a long time in conjunction with their um, their national sales team. Yeah. And so we see us ourselves in, as an extension yeah. of their efforts. And so I've already got groups that are mm-hmm. here in our community that are looking to grow. Or they're looking for it, um, kind of a new, a new, you know, scenic, scenic yeah. area. So they are looking to be, now be placed. I actually had a call yesterday. They're like, "Hey, we want to be in Legends next year," and I was like, "On it, I've got you down." And he said, "I've also got a few more events." And so yeah. it's Legends. Yeah. We're super excited for that, and just the Travis Bryan Midtown Park in general. Um, there's a lot of non-traditional facilities out there. Mm-hmm. Um, just to kind of piggyback off of what you were saying as facilities in town, you know, you've got your traditional ones, you've got your hotel meeting space, you've got your conference centers, but something that I really like to do is showcase and let's get creative. So how can we incorporate, um, the new Travis Bryan fields? How do you incorporate that into your event? You wouldn't think that a baseball field plays in into that. So it's okay. You have your meeting at the Stella. You want that traditional conference setup. You need the AV. Awesome. So now we can get a shuttle and take everyone over to Travis Fields and you can have food trucks. You can have some vendors and you can have a fun kickball game Mm -hmm. and do some team building and retreat and just have fun and relax. And it's not your typical social. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we are very successful in take pride in as the destination Brian team is coming up with those outside of those box, Mm -hmm. unique experiences that make it memorable. So people remember Brian and then the meeting planner looks good and they get good surveys and they boost (laughs) their attendance. Everyone wins. Yes. You just break it down. So simple. <laughs> yeah, this is just yeah. X, Y, Z. There you right. go. Yeah. And there's the not formula hard. for an extra yeah. event. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm actually teaching a course on it now. Okay. I think I, yeah, I'm a okay. guest lecturer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is this class number one? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> event planning 101 yeah. with yeah. Mo. I mean, I mean, you've got RPTS. You I know. am. Yeah. 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 Just saying. Yeah, we've tried. RPTS yeah. is a tough one to get into. 
<laughs> we have connections. Just, yeah. Well, we do too. It's just a matter <laughs> of getting them to respond to anything. Mm. It's hard. We're all busy. We're all yeah. busy. Now. I know. I told Jamie someday we just need to, to go over there. Just walk yeah. right down have the Have equipment, world travel. Yeah. I like I it. I mean, yeah. yes. <laughs> Hi. To show up. Yeah. Yep. How are you doing? That's my strategy, at least. Yeah. Not, yeah. not opposed. <laughs> I mean, just yeah, bring dude. treats. Everyone loves treats. This is true. Yeah, I, I bring my snack basket uh, in the yeah, office. You know, like the, you're the crazy lady who goes into the movie with the big backpack full of snacks and crap. Okay, but it's never you know, noisy what, snacks. It's never noisy snacks. I've been told that. in our office that um, I think I'm kind of a weasel because I weasel my way into situations. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm like, very... where are we going with this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, hey, I see an opportunity. I'm going to take it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So no yeah. risk, no reward. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, Abigail, what's your favorite part of your job? Um, I think surprising people that don't know anything about Brian or have preconceived notions about Brian College Station. Um, I get to talk to a lot of people, especially travel writers, and then I do a lot of trade shows just telling people about Brian. I was just at the Texas Travel Expo um, last week. Basically, I get I talked to, I don't know, it was like 50 Mm -hmm. of the, um, they call them travel counselors that work at the state um, visitor centers, like at the state borders and stuff. And so everyone just knows, especially Texans know this area is just the university. And so it's fun for me to then either I'm, I'm hosting them or I'm, you know, talking about Brian and Brian College Station as a whole. And they're like, oh, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, especially old eggs. Um, it's really fun. It's like specifically Brian, you know, that people that could probably graduate in the 80s, 90s, or early 2000s when Brian was a little more of a ghost town. And now it's like completely 180. And so they were like, wait a second, there's not all that in Brian, Texas. I'm like, well, let me tell you. <laughs> tell um, them that what we always like are like a uh, tagline that we say about downtown and Brian and stuff. So oh, yeah. So university. it's like, well, you've changed since college, right? So also have we. So <laughs> I like that. Yeah. And the only thing the old ax knew was how to get to Sikorsky's and how to get home. Right. <laughs> it's the only thing. It's pretty much. I don't even know what that is. It was like the beer place that all the old ags hang out at. Yeah. Like all the core guys, all everybody. Exactly. Uh, it's not there anymore. But no. <laughs> um, and the same with travel writers. Um, I talk to travel writers from all over the nation that don't really know Texas at all in general. And then they're like, Brian, where's Brian? You know, they don't, other than like Houston, Dallas, or Austin, they've never heard of any city in Texas. And so then bringing them here and having them explore everything we have to offer. And they're like, oh, this is not you know, just college students everywhere. It's Mm -hmm. actually got a lot of culture and arts and charm and then the historic element and everything in between. And also this huge modern twist that we have going on. I think a lot of that contributes to Mm -hmm. A&M, you know, and all the pioneering that the university does in every way, shape and form. Um, And the city leaders, both for Ryan and College Station, have taken that too, you know, with the bio corridor um, out by the Health Science Center and everything Mm -hmm. of that nature. So it's been really fun to surprise people. I think that's my favorite part of the job. Um, Uncut gems, you know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, but I think to kind of piggyback off of what you're saying is that's something that we really do. We're excited Mm -hmm. about is to reintroduce Brian. Brian has its own identity. And for so long, it's kind of been, you know, it's it is two two cities, one community. But Brian really does have its own personality and it Mm -hmm. deserves to have its stories told. And that's what Destination Brian is doing. We are we're we're sitting through we're digging through the papers and the pictures and having these conversations and we're wanting to showcase and that's exactly what we're doing. And we look forward to doing it for a really long time. Yeah, exactly. I have to ask the question. Ask the question. Yes. So why did the two separate? Yeah. Um, if you can poli- talk about it. Sure. <laughs> Politicians yeah. at the end of the day. Um, yeah. So summer of 2020, if life wasn't crazy enough for the, you know, the whole world. What was uh, going on? Yeah. Some small thing called a pandemic. But um <laughs> Yes, minor. But yes, so the city of College Station decided to pull. There was a joint um, tourism organization mm-hmm. called Experience BCS. Mm-hmm. City of College Station decided to pull their funding um, from that organization. That was completely fine. They wanted to take tourism under their economic development department. So that kind of left Brian um, a little bit caught off guard. And so they created Destination Brian. Um, there was the Downtown Brian Association, which I'd worked for previously. So I've been plugged in with Downtown Brian for many years now. And so basically... Downtown Brian and Destination Brian kind of merged, became one as Destination Brian. Um, and yeah, we kind of hit the ground running July of 2020, like from ground to zero, no website, no nothing. Um, and so since July of 2020, we've created everything about Destination Brian. And what's really exciting is, especially since I was it, like focused on Brian with my previous role, now it's just downtown specifically, but 
Brian's never had its own tourism voice, really, um, in the history of the community. I mean, yes, the city has done a great job at, at you know, promoting their aspects of Brian, more from a governmental side. You know, there's only so much they can do. Then downtown was promoted, but kind of the rest of Brian kind of got a little lost in between everybody promoting all the other things. Um, and so we've seen just a huge uptick in not only like our hotel numbers, but our sales tax number, sales tax numbers and everything in between and just anecdotal feedback from our business owners. I mean, the past year specifically, like I would say 12 months, yeah. um, you know, has been a huge growth in the traffic in Bryan. And so that's been yeah. really exciting to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, especially especially for our small business owners, because um, mm-hmm. so many of the businesses in Bryan are locally owned and operated mm-hmm. and they've been in the same family with multiple generations. So I know. 2020 and 2021 was really hard for them. Um, every small business owner in the whole world, but it's been really exciting to see that growth. Um, you know, just like first Friday last week was insane, like in the best way possible, like the most I've been helping with first Fridays for five years now. And it's definitely the largest first Friday I've ever seen. Um, so it's been really exciting to see that opportunity and that growth for Brian. Shout out to Chris Ortegon and our events department. Yeah. (laughs) The events team, yes, definitely kicked it, this one out of the park. Um, so it's been really fun to see those opportunities come for really everybody in Brian. And I was actually with Experience Brian College Station during the split. So um, previously I was on the hotel side and then I moved over to the CBB Mm -hmm. side, which is where I really found my calling. Um, I I love, you know, hotels always have a soft spot in my heart. I've started out at the front desk and worked all the way up to sales. Um, But being able to really have a planner or someone come in and say, here are your options. Now let's really curate an, a custom experience for you. And I'm not, you know, stuck in just, here's my meeting space at a hotel. And so that's what I really like. And then whenever the separation happened, um, I, like I said, saw an opportunity. And so they, <laughs> uh, the city of Bryan asked John Freebel, our executive director mm-hmm. to, um, head up destination Brian. And as soon as he made his announcement, I literally slid into his text messages and I said, Hey, <laughs> whatever opportunity you got, I like, I'm all in, let's do this. And so he asked me to come with him and brought over our marketing manager as well. Mm-hmm. And it's been, I have not looked back. It has been the best thing that has happened. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 It sounds like college station has not got a lot of people left. They've yeah. got, yeah, they, no, they've got, they, they have some really good people still in place yeah. there that yeah, are truly just, passionate. Yeah, like a skeleton crew. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. They're going yeah. through some growth, yeah. some yeah. changes. Some Absolutely. Growth. I just think it's sad. I mean, even for myself, I've, I don't even know how long I've been here now. Um, you don't have to age it. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, you're right. <laughs> I probably aged myself enough times on these. But um, yeah, when I first moved here, I only knew College Station as Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. Like right. there's never been mm-hmm. anything outside right. of that. Um, and the, obviously the longer that I'm here, of course, I mm-hmm. know that that's not true. But right. Um, you know, it's been really nice to see Brian grow. We mm-hmm. used to go down there a lot right. to have dinner. I preferred it because it wasn't with yeah. all the college kids. Mm-hmm. Right. There was a lot right. of nicer things to do. It was quiet. You could walk the family around, Absolutely. that kind of stuff. So yeah. um, I definitely, even though I live in College Station, prefer Brian more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I live in College Station as well. Um, and, and with the university, just to kind of talk more on that, is the university, I mean, we exist because the university is sure. here. And so that's something that I don't want people to forget, mm-hmm. but we now incorporate that mindset and know that Brian compliments, they complement each other. Mm-hmm. And so we, we should be very proud of the university being here and, you know, with Relis outside in Brian, you know, Re- yeah. Texas A&M is all over this community. It's not just in college mm-hmm. station, you know, the health science center Relis. And so it's just really exciting. And, and, I want people to really recognize that as well. Like people, if you're here and you're in it all the time, you can get jaded, but let's, one thing that we try to do is shift that focus is really, really understand the impact and how the university and all these family weekends and things like that, that's coming up. They really do impact our quality of life (laughs) without that tourism Mm -hmm. and that cycle. We would Mm -hmm. not be able to have the quality of life events and, um, you know, capital investments and things like that, that come in. So let's embrace it. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, I also prefer Brian, <laughs> <laughs> but I live in Brian. <laughs> okay. I don't even live in the County, but I'm pro Brian. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> well, just North Olge. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Land is way cheaper. I need that too. Way. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, I feel I like just, your house is like 
like eclectic and like super fun. No, it's not. It's not. Oh it's my not. gosh. Um, she, only because she has a husband. I have a husband. <laughs> yeah, same. I have like my little space that I get, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. mostly her office. Yeah, it's yeah, it's my office. But we do have we have a lot of um, antique and mm-hmm. local art hanging in the house. Okay. Like her, um, for her mother-in-law, her pictures are hanging. Oh, yeah. So you're going to art fair this weekend, right? Um, no, because they're running events this weekend. Well, my event's not this weekend, um, but gotcha. that's on Saturday, right? I yeah. I'm have, supposed to go because my child has art that he's trying to I'm sell. I'm hearing a lot of excuses. Yes. I have <laughs> fence to build for yes. our cows. Oh, <laughs> they have a farm. Yeah. It's not in yeah, whatever. Um, but I've always preferred downtown where I am because of the art mm-hmm. yeah. and the eclecticness yeah. mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. And it was like low key. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, I forgot that was this weekend. Just going. And like seeing everything and yeah, how right. much it's grown, like it's really nice. But then a part of me is also like, remember the old days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, when no one is, knew about growth it, growth is always anything. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I love the little farmers markets and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Right, it goes on down there in the fairs and that's the beauty of this community. Is there you have two different experiences that you can really get. You know, mm-hmm. if you're looking for that small town, slow pace, family owned, you know deep in cultural and heritage mm-hmm. you go to brian but then right. if you go to college station you've got those those little bit main focus corporate franchise things so whatever you're looking for you've mm-hmm. got it here yeah 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 there's a lot to offer a ton all right i have to know like what is y'all's favorite event that y'all do <laughs> that's like the question <laughs> i get that question all the time um well now i don't feel so special i know no it's okay <laughs> No, it's great because um, it's nice coming from like another professional and not a college student writing a paper and they call me, you know, when their paper's due in 12 oh, hours yeah. and going, they don't, they haven't researched us at all. Not that that's not based on actual experience. Yeah, that's <laughs> totally fine. I mean, you got to learn. We, we can actually, learn. we can appreciate the, yes. uh, the work that goes in. Right. Yes. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. I'll take it. Um, yeah, I think first Friday for me, um, like I said, I've been helping with all the downtown events for five years now. Um, when I was with DBA, a lot more hands-on with the events. Now we have a whole events team, which is fantastic. Um, and they do a great job, but first Friday I've seen it grow so many. So when we, I first started in 2017, first Friday didn't have any street closures and now we closed down nearly three blocks. Um, we have to, because of the amount of people down there and the amount of vendors and artists and musicians and everything we have. And so even just like the logistical growth of it has been really fascinating and the trials and errors and heartaches and headaches and joys that come with that and running an event <laughs> and merchants. We love our merchants, but it's a range of personalities. Sure. And so, you know, catering to all of them in, in ways that support their business. Um, though my favorite thing about first Friday is it's literally like people like everyone in the community knows about first Friday, mm-hmm. but it's like these family and friends don't talk about that they're all going, but then they all show up there and run into each other. And they're like, well, I didn't know you were coming. Why well, didn't know you were coming. And it's like this natural like gathering place mm-hmm. that's really exciting. And that's just downtown in general, but especially on first Friday, because everyone's going to, you know, see something just new. something in the air. Yeah. There's a, there's a vibe. There's a buzz happening. But that's like, I, I can't tell you how many times. It's even happened to me. Like, I run into my own parents down there. I'm like, <laughs> I'm working here. Like, why'd you tell me you were coming? You don't even live in this town. Yeah. I mean, they do now, which is great. But yes, it's like happened. It's been really fun. And so it's cool to see those unique experiences happen. Um, and you just like, it, it's like, t- it never fails time and time again. Or is it people discovering something new about downtown? Mm-hmm. You know, they might have lived here for multiple years. So like, well, I didn't know you could, you know, find that kind of pizza at RX or Mr. G's or whatever. I'm just like, haven't you lived here for a while? <laughs> like, <laughs> but I, then I forget, like, not not everyone is plugged in with, you know, Brian, like what we do on our side of the tourism world. Like, we have to know what's going on in all these businesses because we promote them all the time. Sure. So it's really fun to see them like surprise stumble upon their family or friends or mm-hmm. something new that they've never realized that's in downtown. So it's first Friday for sure for me. Yeah. I, you know, first Friday, I think that's a great one. And some of the things like you had said that people don't know about it and they go mm-hmm. to it for the first time. And so as a salesperson and how <laughs> I've learned how to evolve that, and we have such a great 
team within Destination Brian, who makes all of my crazy ideas a reality. Um, I actually work with a group and they wanted to typically they have something on campus for like a, you know, first night kickoff event. Um, and with the pandemic, they weren't able to do that just with all of the policies in place. And so we, you know, went back to the drawing board. How do what are we going to do for these students? You know, this is something that this is their their vacation. This is something mm-hmm. that they look forward to every year. Um, and so we, they, we deserve to give them that. And so we took the concept of first Friday and we created a custom kickoff event for that group for 4-H Roundup. Mm-hmm. And it was something that it was a little bit different. It was new. There was some like, Ooh, I'm not too sure about this. <laughs> um, but it was, it was so successful and it was on a Tuesday evening. So it also mm-hmm. impacted all of our business owners in downtown. Yeah. And, you know, the next week I went to go have lunch and the um, restaurant owner said it was amazing for us on yeah. a Tuesday evening. We never mm-hmm. see that sort of traffic. And so what I love about all of our events is how we take that traditional concept and we adjust it a little bit and curate mm-hmm. a custom experience for our group. So really we have this master plan and we're not really having to work much harder. We've got the basics, but we're still able to provide an impact and create an experience that everyone's Mm going to remember and not only impact and create an experience for the attendees, but also our local businesses as well. Yeah, for sure. I miss that. I'm tired of academics. (laughs) Hey, I'm looking for an intern. (laughs) (laughs) It's a paid internship. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Could you imagine me doing an internship? No. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> coffee? What's that? Yeah. I'm getting you coffee. There's a Keurig over there. Fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're at it, bring me one too. Yeah. 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 No. Um, <laughs> sorry, we've kind of jumped all over our list no, you're here. Good. That's how I um, <laughs> Well, you've gone through most so, of them. So, do you have. I'm not going to ask. No. You Can you tell rogue? us what? You're I going broke. rogue? I broke. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. You're rogue. rogue. Sorry. I can't hear. Put um, your pack on. <laughs> Turn my pack on. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit of the f- facilities you have to offer when booking mm-hmm. special events outside of hotels? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm glad you specified that. Because I've that. seen some. Yeah. So some mm-hmm. of your basic ones that are, you know, they're not a hotel, but they're still, when they come top of mind, you've got the Brazos County Expo, mm-hmm. you've got the Brazos Center, you've got Legends that's coming on board. But one thing I really want to point out is those Really? Uniques. I almost said it. I almost oh said boy. it. You gave Say me the it. corner eye. Say it. <laughs> so we accidentally tagged the wrong tag on the Brazos Center. Oh, gosh. And we definitely got a hate email. <sighs> oh, no. Oh, no. From the, was it from the center or from the expo? It was from the center. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oops. Yeah, okay. Was, so my brain always says the Brazos Valley Expo Center. Yes. That's not right. That's no, not, that's no. not right. That's two different places. We definitely yeah. got corrected. Yes. Well, yes. they put you in your place. They yeah. did. They did. They did. Honestly, black say, and white. Honestly, Brian, we, we the master stick together. Oh, man. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go so ahead. yes, you've got the <laughs> Brazos County funny. Expo, and yes. you've got the Brazos Center. So those are your traditional. Mm-hmm. First, top of mind, yeah, that's a venue space. But the unique ones is, you know, starting in downtown. You've got the Grand Stafford Theater. I absolutely love the what that facility can transform into. Um, you've got downtown 202. Again, these are blank, blank canvas facilities that can be created into whatever experience you're looking to do. You can bring in your browns and your banquet chairs, but you can also bring in some soft seating, bring in some, um, you know, uh, couches and and linens and stuff and it really is whatever you want it to be and it's at a good price point so downtown 202 is in the marketplace it, it's right next, next door to, mm-hmm. it's right next door to the marketplace yep. yeah. yeah same ownership yeah okay and both yeah mm-hmm. both businesses so which part was madden's it was in madden's shared on like 27th street um in the space within old brian marketplace okay yeah so it was inside the marketplace yeah, yeah. where yeah so madden was owned by stuff. chef tay yes. um and, and his group and so yeah they closed down i guess the end of 2020 time, i think time has just i don't know these past couple exist years anymore. have merged together but uh but yes the Owners of Old Brian are looking for a new restaurant to go in there. They want to refill it with a restaurant because it was super successful. Do anyone? For their. <laughs> Plenty of chefs. <laughs> yeah. For their concept. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
of course, Ice House on Main is also mm-hmm. a really great mm-hmm. facility. Um, but even too, I think something that gets overlooked is um, over in Lake Walk, the Pavilion. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a great outdoor venue that again can be transformed into whatever you're looking for. You're looking mm-hmm. for you bring in some people in who aren't from Texas and you want to do a barbecue cookout. Let's do it. You can throw up some live music. You can bring in some barbecue, and you've got yeah. this atmosphere um, that now was just a green space. Mm-hmm. You know the tower. I I want to do just like a small client event up there so bad. And again, that's that's what I love doing. I love creating these unique experiences that are far fetched and crazy. And people cocktail think, hour at high heights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Limit the drinks. <laughs> okay, that's there's parameters. Was, how would you get them down? There's He's like, rip there's a parachute. Yeah, yeah. Parachute yeah. Down. You get jump a drink, in the water, and then you get your workout in. Come on, it's all about how you spin it. That ladies. sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I, don't know. I would like to see you sell that one. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that... put someone in front of me. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're not about that yoga at the beginning of webinars. We're not. We're not here for that life. <laughs> no, no hit class is nothing. You can no. save it. Oh no, don't tell me up for that either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So what else? Because I saw there was, is it 1818? I keep looking at it. Mm-hmm. Is that, that's in Bryan. Yeah. That's kind of like out, yeah. out by Relis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. That's yeah. that little one. Yeah. The one. Yeah. 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 There's new. a lot of um, smaller, I'd call them probably a little more, people would categorize them more like wedding venue mm-hmm. styles. But of course, those buildings don't have to be used for weddings. They can mm-hmm. be used for banquets for an organization mm-hmm. or a party in general or a meeting space and everything. Yeah. There's like the Brownstone reserve yep. kind of on, um, the East side of Brian mm-hmm. off of 2038. Um, yeah. Amber yeah. The wine, kind of like there. yes. there's so many of those yeah, um, little unique about. places. And then mm-hmm. a lot of people forget a lot of our restaurants in Brian mm-hmm. actually have mm-hmm. space mm-hmm. as well. Um, that you don't just have to have necessarily like a banquet per se in them. You can have like a lunch meeting in mm-hmm. them. Um, we had a team retreat upstairs of Cafe Capri. Yeah. So I was actually about to ask that yeah. because yeah. I always they know they space. have this space, but I've never known anyone to do anything up yeah, there. Yeah, rehearsal dinners are up there all the time, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've had we've pitched that to like different lunch meetings and stuff, and it works out great, um, especially, you know, for like under 50 people yeah. is a perfect spot. Um, um, the name is slipping my mind. I had some other... The Cotton Exchange. Does. Yes, yep. the Cotton Exchange yep. in downtown. Um, there's a new space in downtown. The Reserve at Cottonwood Creek mm-hmm. um, is really cool. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of everything in between. Um, does Kyle House have a meeting space? They have a, yeah. a room. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's not your traditional meeting space, but we've also utilized mm-hmm. their – they have a little side room, yeah. um, and we've used that for a t- uh, staff retreat as well. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And the coffee is like we definitely have to do um, tour because I don't realize how much is down there. Mm-hmm. I think I know some people that could hook you up yeah. with that yes. visit, so um, I'll be sure and make that hi. connection. Yeah, me too. We talked. We'll about, well, we talked morning, about doing, and yeah. then we'll wrap up with like a happy hour. You, yeah. I mean, you have to try everything. Well, yeah, you have yeah. to know what you're promoting, of course. Right. Yeah. You can end it at Vino. Yeah. Oh, have you had a chance to check out? No, Vino we were going to go to the oh, Insight my magazine. God. Yes. And well, then, you should, we could have met then. Well, <laughs> it, had, it had been Dang, rescheduled. That was aggressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was rescheduled because of the tornadoes. Yeah. It had been oh yeah. We had planned to go. We couldn't go to the rescheduled yeah, time. Yeah. 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 But no, yeah, she we, was. I she was. I was like, my big old truck. Okay. Well, when you want to go, let me know, and I've got your drink. Yeah. Okay, first, third, or fifth weekends of every month. <laughs> my kid just, goes to his dad's. Yeah, you just need your calendar. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want to go. Do they do they renovate the inside of it at all? Um, a little bit. They rebranded. Def- yeah, well, they, they right. It's so very it's, eclectic. Yeah, okay. it's very bohemian. Yeah, exactly, bohemian. Yeah, so it's owned by um Christy Petty, who d- who d- owns the Village Cafe. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the food is directly from the village, mm-hmm. which I is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the um, TBA sandwich. Mm. Yeah. Um, Their honey lavender lattes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. It, it really is. Um, yeah, they didn't, like, do, do a lot of, like, major remodel, per se. Like, they're cosmetic. still the main bar. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, it's definitely more cosmetic. But, like, I hosted a presentation to May's uh, marketing graduate class in there because mm-hmm. um, it was a lunch thing, too. So then um, yeah. Village just, like, box lunched it over. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know. It was really cool. Yeah. Something different. And I actually used the wine bar as my anchor point for a sip and shop event that I hosted for the mm-hmm. Aggie Mom Federation. Yeah. So while they were here for their federation meeting back in January, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're um, I put together um, Amanda on our events team. She and I worked together and we did a sip and shop event for them. So we provided transportation from campus, um, from the MSC, and we 
transported them to downtown. And we had, I think like 10 um, retailers Mm -hmm. from downtown and they all had a different theme. So it was like drinking around the world. And so one was, you know, Paris, one was Transylvania. Like it was all, it was just really fun experience. And I Mm -hmm. used, um, I worked with Christy and I had uh, Vino Boehm as my anchor point. So where they could get their information, they could, you know, show us their ideas and all that stuff and really incorporate. And then, so that way, although Christy's not a retailer, she was still getting exposure Mm -hmm. And people were like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know this was here. And they stuck around, had another drink. It was amazing. Yeah. We're in the wrong side of business. Probably. Yeah. The <laughs> last internship. The last, <laughs> the last uh, sip and I'm shop I went to is one with beer. Cheers to craft beer in downtown, yes. Brian, in the summer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That one was fun. Um, that one's coming back this summer, um, oh. June 11th um, is when that one's going to mm-hmm. happen. I almost did that one. I went with Amber. Yeah. Of course you did. <laughs> Well, yeah, tons of sure. craft beer. Just yeah, get a whole busload of us and go. Yeah, yeah. So, how did y'all get into the event industry? <laughs> Yours, mine's a long that's story. Like, that's, yeah. a, that's like an evil cat. Yeah. I know. So I'm gonna tell. That's a loaded more. question for Morgan. <laughs> I was really excited. Mine was. Mine was. Um, I literally just fell into it. Yeah, I I graduated from A and M in 2012 with a marketing degree, and I worked in the senior care industry doing social media marketing. For Alzheimer's facilities, not the greatest industry, but I learned a lot. That's so sad. Um, I got yeah. to work from home for four years, so there was a part to it. Um, and then I was ready for something new and stumbled upon the job um, in downtown Bryan, the Downtown Bryan Association. Um, and it was marketing. So I, yeah, so I went in as marketing. I basically became a part time events coordinator because we were such a small staff. It just was all hands on deck for everything. Hats. Yeah, you, yeah, I did everything. Um, and so, yeah, I just kind of really honest, just, honestly stumbled into it yeah <laughs> um yes as I do for most things in life I stumble into it mm-hmm. um so I was at AM and working on my degree and G stud like I don't know what I'm gonna do someone's like oh I'm doing RPTS I was like oh what is that and they told me and I was like cool that sounds like a great degree to get me through and so I did it <laughs> and I was sitting in class and someone goes yeah I'm um, there's this new hotel opening up. Um, I'm going to apply for front desk. And at the time, I was actually working at Easterwood in the cafe. So I was making that pot of coffee for that first flight out. Wouldn't see anyone. So I would have to be there at 530. Wouldn't see anyone again till about nine o'clock. So I drank lots of coffee, watched a lot of Netflix. Um <laughs> And it sounds all right. <laughs> so yeah. I did that for about two years. Um, and then so I interviewed and I got the job at the Hilton Garden Inn here in, in town across um, university and started at the front desk, um, had interest to do the events manager job. And so our events manager actually went out on maternity leave. So I was interim. And I was like, I got this. I got the textbooks. I know what I'm doing. Um, no. Not. I got the textbook. <laughs> the textbooks don't teach you what's really supposed to happen in real life. So I literally learned trial and error. Yeah. Um, I got set straight several times, um, but I absolutely loved it. I, I get a high off of making people happy and doing all these things. So started started there, worked my way up to catering sales manager at the hotel as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was really cool. And then, um, I took a break from the hotel world for a little bit. Um, we, my husband and I moved to Lincoln, Nebraska for about six months in the winter. So definitely don't encourage anyone to do that. Um, Lincoln was amazing though. We came back, um, he went back to the university. And so I learned about, um, the Texas A&M hotel and conference center opening up. So I was actually a part of that opening team. Um, and I was doing sales for them. And so found my way there, was back in the hotels. Again, I wasn't, I loved it, but I wasn't feeling truly fulfilled. And so the opportunity presented itself with Experience Bryan College Station, jumped on the opportunity. And like I said, I haven't looked back since because I really get to showcase the entire community um, and what we have to offer. Question. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. When you were at the hotel and conference center, did you do any of the preliminary tours before it was finished? Oh, yeah. I was giving hard hat tours before there were even I recognized walls. her from somewhere. I'm pretty sure My hair is our- probably different. Yes. It changes. It'll probably be different the next time you see yeah, me. Yeah, it changes about every three to four months. So. My mom goes, do you change your hair with your mood? I was like, mm, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's Yikes. cheaper than therapy. That's it what it is. Well, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it, it is. You might still have to do that, but yeah. it's still sure. Yeah, she's the same way. Every time um, she changes her hair, we have to update her website picture. We I, they joke thing. about that in the office. They're like, Morgan, we cannot change your headshot every time. I was like, yeah. why not? We have a photographer on I staff. I just tell them to quit, yeah. Yeah. I'm on number five, six, nine. Nine. <laughs> what was it? A couple, nine. like a, like, honestly, maybe three months ago, I had platinum blonde hair. Yeah. And it was long. Yes. Yeah. So it was really long brown, I feel like, when we first met you. Probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's really br- long Because when you walked in, website, I was like, I recognize her face, but now it. that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. 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 So I was given hard hat tours. Yep. We were pre-officed yep. in um, Kyle Field. Mm-hmm. And so people are like, how do you know what you're doing? And I'm like, oh, you know. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> this is gonna be a guest room and it's like the kitchen and i'm like yeah. that's fine <laughs> but they don't know yeah yeah, yeah exactly just, come back and see it when it's finished yeah yeah that's yeah. all you gotta do They're not get them back for a second. exactly <laughs> that's funny small world yeah keeps getting smaller and smaller mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. see one day i'll be like me no just i don't want everybody like no i'm good i like my bubble <laughs> my little small bubble well because i talk to walls and just about sure. anything. Look, I, I know used to. I used to do that. I, I used met to. several times yeah. before she, before we actually realized. Before I actually realized I shouldn't have hired you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she's regretted it every day since. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> same thought process in our office. Uh, like, <laughs> my boss is like, "What are we gonna do with you, Morgan?" I was like, "I don't know. Keep me around." Yeah. yeah. Just At least st- for entertainment value. Like, exactly. Worth That's what I tell my husband all the time. I'm like, listen, I don't cook, but I'm fantastic at pouring the wine and keeping conversation going. Whether you're listening <laughs> to me or not, I'm going to talk. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like that should be a sitcom. I, I mean, yeah. I feel like I should have started my marriage off like that. <laughs> so the expectations way yeah. lower. Follow me for more marriage yeah. advice. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. If someone was Yikes. interested in going into the industry, what's the one piece of advice you would give them? You want to go? Embrace it and do it all. Do not, do not think you're above any task mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. position whatsoever. Um, when I was at the Hilton Garden Inn and I was, you know, selling these events and running the events, I was also in my heels, turning rooms, doing tables. Great workout obviously, but also, you know, we would be there until 2 a.m. trying to close out the bar, the cash tabs, get everything clean because we have an event the next day. So I'm in my like business attire and I've got an apron on and I'm washing dishes so the rest of the banquet staff can get the room turned because it's a one team, one dream. I know that's such a cheesy cliche line, but I live and breathe it because Mm -hmm. if you don't know what all the other departments have to go through, how do you expect to operate as a true team? Um, so even on the sales side, you know, I, you book this group and you promise them an early check-in. Well, you need to take into consideration, how does that affect the rest of the hotel and the operations? Mm -hmm. And so if you need to get in there and you need to help turn that room, you better get your butt in there and do it. You Mm -hmm. don't think you can't help out housekeeping, pull those towels and gather them and change sheets, put pillowcases in because it truly is one team, one dream. And if you're going to sell it, then you need to be able to execute it as well. So I think we can stop there. <laughs> I drop. I'm like, she should do our customer service manual. I'm replacing you <laughs> right. for the video. <laughs> That's bullshit. Just because, just because I'm not so upbeat about it. But I have the same. Same thought process. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so I've been fine. in our kitchen doing the dishes oh, yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I mean, we just did it well, last week. Well, and then week. you make friends with the, the restaurant staff and then you get. Food. Food. <laughs> you're like, hey, come try this. And you're like, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm a taste tester mm-hmm. yeah. on the resume. <laughs> I like to call myself quality control. Yep. Yeah. So with the sip and shop, I was quality control. Yep. Oh, a hundred percent. Someone had to be. Someone had to be. Again, we want to make sure we're giving out a good product. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But I always tell the caterers and they bring in food, like, oh, I'm sorry. I have yeah. to taste up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that yeah. okay? I'm not as upbeat and, you know. Are you still hooked on that? Yes, I am. Still- <laughs> I'm still hooked. We're on moving it. forward. We're right. past. Right. But you know, I'm saying like I I feel the same way. I yeah. agree. I'm just not as cheery about it as you are. <laughs> or we can be yin and yang if you want. Yeah, I'm yeah. cool with that. I That's just fine. you know I have my moments. It's just been a long morning. <laughs> <laughs> Again, where is her coffee? Yeah, right? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yes. I had one before I left the house. It didn't do me any good. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Drink no, more you're water. good. Um. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely one of it, you know, from the non kind of hotel that sales background of events. It's like, don't be like, you got to pick up the trash at the end of the day, you know, your events over and you got to help do all the things. Um, 
but other than just knowing how to do all aspects of the event and like, you know, appreciating all mm-hmm. the different levels that take into it, I think it's just you've got to go in with a very open mind and meeting people and learning from anybody and everybody. Um, I feel like I've learned more about events and how to market them or run them or coordinate them, even just from talking to the business owners in downtown during a downtown event, you know, because from their perspective, the event is a completely different, you know, beast of an animal compared to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's like learning what that balance point between is, um, especially if you're doing like a public event in a public place with like actual businesses, it's learning like what the attendees are expecting versus how that's impacting um, the businesses in that area. That's a very fine line to walk sometimes. You're never going to make everyone happy. So yeah. how do you make everyone just um, kind of yeah, mellow? Yeah, it's just more like, yeah. Board. Can you get there? Can you get to like that 85% mark of, yeah, 85% of people are great, you know? Um, but no, it's really, it's really it's just realistic. You, yeah. Yes. You just got to live and learn, honestly, is a mm-hmm. lot of it. And, uh, Trial not, and error, baby. Not to, that's so funny. I like, I was not and did not study quote unquote events by any means. I have um, a textbook you can look at. Yeah. So it's hilarious when it you're like, this do you I, I'm using it as like a prop to like raise a vase in my house. So yeah. It's, fine. it's hilarious that you say there's like a textbook on event writing. I'm like, I didn't realize there'd be actual textbooks. I feel like you just, it's trial by fire. Yeah, um, you just kind of learn. <laughs> Yeah, you just learn what it is and learn what works and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. But it depends on what you're looking for because most of the books you find are how to plan a wedding. And it's like, okay, I exactly. The wedding industry is huge, but not all of us okay, are but interested. Like the, my CMP study mm-hmm. book. That's I mean, what that's, I'm saying. Okay, but that's so you different. Have your CMP. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nice. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got like the one thing that I felt wasn't useful for me was like trade shows. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now we're kind of we're doing mm-hmm. vendor showcases. Mm-hmm. Right. Here. Right. So it's kind of come. Like in handy for, yeah. you know, table spacing and what mm-hmm. people are sure. expecting and what the expectation is that it is. Spacing. Oh, yeah. I had a job one time where my boss literally like came out with his ruler and was like, are there six feet apart? And I'm like, okay, go back to your office. Yeah. You and your stupid handy. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought totally, you were about to pull one out. She did. Oh, okay. She has a miniature one on her keys. She gave all of us Yes. One. I because like I don't it. let them. I make them learn how to eyeball it first. It came in very helpful with COVID and making yeah, sure, sure that yes. seats yeah, were far enough absolutely. apart. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So but, it did come in handy. Yes, it As did. long as someone's not having to like scoot, like, so, excuse me, like through the chairs. Yeah. It's good for me. <laughs> it's good. Yep. Well, look, it just said, depends on if, if that's what the client wants, then all right. It's all about what they want. want. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's something that I, when I talk to someone, I'm like, listen, I want to understand the anatomy of your event. What is something that has worked for you in the past? What didn't mm-hmm. work for you? How do we avoid that? What is right. something that is such a crazy idea that you don't even think is achievable? Maybe it is. Maybe we, you know, ha- find a happy medium. So that way tr- we really are curating a custom and unique experience for whatever the planner is. And again, it's to make them look good at the mm-hmm. end of the day, um, make sure their boss is happy, make sure their leadership is happy, increase and boost their attendance and grow year over year. And so they can be profitable. Yeah. And then we in turn get the sales tax and the hotel tax and oh, it's right. synergy full circle, <laughs> full circle of synergy. <laughs> hundred oh, percent. Fabulous. We're going to have to have y'all back. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to have to, she's gonna have to host her own Ted talk one day. She don't threaten her with a good time. I mean, exactly. <laughs> all she needs is a cell phone and a YouTube channel. You know channel. what? I have a better idea. Maybe you two should do the amazing race. Oh, what is this? But we don't, <laughs> our staff keeps, our staff and student orders keep saying that we're going to join the amazing race. Oh. Apparently they're doing auditions. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Whatever. You'd leave me behind. See, That's, my I would, like, I would totally leave. My <laughs> goal, I'm like, I want to host my own show. I want to be Kelly Ripa. And my husband's like, you were completely awkward on camera because he works in production also. And mm-hmm. I was like, so it's unfortunate that I don't like have a roommate, my husband, who works in this <laughs> that right. could help me out. <laughs> it's an ongoing battle. Well, you can okay. show him this and then you can tell him you're not yeah. awkward. Yeah. Everything's yeah. awkward. Like, See? He goes, I just, if you were on, I just wouldn't watch it. And I was like, thanks Aww. for the support, honey. <laughs> Well, I mean, my husband doesn't watch these. Mine doesn't so. either. Yeah, it's fine. They <laughs> okay. did in the beginning when it was really bad. Mine didn't. It's yeah. okay. My husband's really like 80 at heart. And every time I'm on the noon show for KBTX, he always watches it because he's Aww. watching the weather. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's really the that's weather six, channel. That's six o'clock though. No yeah. shot. No, we watch the six o'clock news. The 10 o'clock for sure. No, <laughs> we're in bed. <laughs> we're here asleep. Well, I mean, I'm in bed yeah. before 10. It's yeah. really runs at that point. He's yeah. not missing it's, anything. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> if you've watched it all day, then you don't have to watch exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's totally fine. The news. Maybe. Lots of things happen here. 
Yes. It's mainly the weather. That's what mainly he watches. Mainly the weather. Yeah. 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 But it still changes a lot. It does. Yeah. Depends on who's giving the weather. <laughs> Shell. <laughs> Cheese. Ugh. KBTX. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yes. Thank, thank y'all, y'all so, so much. much. Oh my yeah. God. Wow. <laughs> that was the cutest thing I've ever heard. I hate it. Thank, you. thank y'all for joining us. You are going to have to come back. We would love to be back. Uh, absolutely. We'll do a and traveling one for happy hour and hope that never happens. Let, oh my gosh. Yes. Let's perfect. do that. And you pick a place you want to, to showcase in downtown Bride and we'll do it. We will do it. Yeah. We'll do a progressive. Love it. Don't. Again. Summer <laughs> series. <gasps> yes. Okay. Summer series. Okay. Listen. Again, I'm don't tip me with a good time. No, I'm serious. Yeah. Like, Because we don't have a summer series. We weren't going to mm-hmm. do one. Book it. Yeah, Let's yeah, do, do it. it. And also be expecting an email to be a part of our vendor showcase that's yes. in August. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. We would love for y'all to have a booth. Yeah. We will be there. We're right. always in to and tell any, more people about Brian. And anybody else you can think of that we haven't thought about. Well, we're getting our list together. Okay? That's what I'm saying. Some, Some of them are coming there. off the Destination mm-hmm. Brian website. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, that meetings page just launched. So take yeah, advantage nice. of it. I worked hard with our marketing team to get that together. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's something we've always talked about. There's nothing that mm-hmm. has one location for people to find what they're mm-hmm. looking for when it comes to events. Right. Yeah. Unless it's the not.com for wedding venues. So, well, yeah. Right. <laughs> Which actually we, um, I actually need to get y'all's information so we can put it on our meetings page too. Okay. Well, I'm going to just take it then. I'll give it to her. <laughs> prime location but, to a hotel and an airport. So right? something that we did yes. actually is we have a backdrop that we use at mm-hmm. trade shows and it has, it's a map of Bryan College Station. Don't steal our idea. Um, it's okay. A million people are about to after the trade show I was at last week. I was like, where'd you get that? But like, we oh. have all these points of interest mm-hmm. in the community, downtown Bryan. We've got Relis. We've got, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And we have the George Bush um, library and everything. And it's a QR code. Code. And mm-hmm. so it's our backdrop so people can scan it. So we're already doing yeah. all a favor. We have a QR code on our signage. Look at that. Yeah. Who? <laughs> QR codes. Who would have thought? The most epic yeah. comeback. Oh, the most the epic comeback. I was going to say, because yeah. I, was, I was doing venue management training when that first started becoming a big thing. And they talked, they had an entire like two hour session on QR codes. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? What would we ever you have to download this special app? I was like, I am yeah. not downloading the app. That's yeah. dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and and now, with COVID. now I'm like, wait, I just have to open my camera. Yeah. I still don't get it. What? <laughs> <laughs> But so then my phone, like my screen's big, and so like the thing is moving all the time, and somehow, you know, I think I just made myself sound silly, but <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> no one else has that struggle. Not, Not really. My phone is still from like 2009, so like 2000. Twelve. I don't. So I'm still like Ooh. hanging on. You're on that. She tries. To, no, no. She's, no, a, she's, she's a an Samsung. Android. Oh, Android. you have a BlackBerry. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> they hey. tried to make a comeback. They tried. I, I would. I would one. use a BlackBerry. I would too. I, love I BlackBerry. would do it. I, do I had too. one for a hot second, so and I. I felt like I was a freshman in college. Why do I need a BlackBerry? But I felt real cool. Yeah, I loved <laughs> Blackberries. Yeah, I don't know why I did either because I never did emails at the time. Mm-mm. <laughs> But anyway, you felt those really texts were like well thought out yeah. and written. Yeah, yeah they were. <laughs> yeah. Because the, the whole keyboard was written. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. And the sidekick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Good times. Yeah. My bad. Okay. Yeah. Now that we've thrown back to the early 2000s, <laughs> look, they brought up QR codes, not me. We tree branch. That yeah. should be the name of our show, Tree Branching. Tree branch. We're not changing the logo again, I swear. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna end here. I'm not gonna say. We're gonna tell bye. I don't want to say, but we're probably gonna keep talking. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye. So bye. <laughs> so bye. <laughs> <laughs>